Hi, I'm Abby Crago. And I'm Tyler Bickle. We're interviewing some of the Baldy Larry football players from the undefeated team of 1963. So could you all please go around and just introduce yourselves and what position you played? Uh, Terry Dorman left in. Ken Hall, I was supposedly an end, but mainly special teams. Chris Brower, nose guard and center. Gary Dyke, defensive back. Uh, Danny Yerrick, and I was the uh, left guard. Can I ask our question? What does it feel like to be back in the high school? I mean, what has changed the most? I work in the weight room, so I've been here quite a bit uh, over the years. I work as a uh, trainer in the weight room, and I was the booster club president for many years. So I've not been out of here that long, really. Pretty much the same. Well, I, I, I've lived not too close. I've lived away for quite a few years, and I get back occasionally. But, uh, you know, I, I, when I walked in tonight, saw what has happened you know I really felt pr pr proud and, uh, you know this is home this is our roots you know we you know we I think we were the first class to go the whole way through weren't we yeah I think so I think we were the first class that started in seventh yeah. grade and we all came from out on the mountain down in the valley I never forth. liked those guys from power either <laughs> yeah but I liked the girls from the mountain yeah so. you did. <laughs> you know, well, but we all came together you know and it yeah, was you know this not, is not right these away. are these are really these are really brothers and friends I mean yeah, we're, it we took, feel close it really took till you know I, I think we were close to junior high before you lost that click you know of, you know we were close to senior high <laughs> Could be. Hey, why, when I was here in seventh grade, I can remember walking down the hall and seeing fist fights in the hall. Uh, you remember that? Oh, yes. I mean, it was constant and fighting the teachers. You remember uh, uh, Phil Miller and uh, <laughs> Phil was... Marshall Packer? Yeah, they had they were rolling around on floors duking it out, and the Mr. Lankin walked up and was they rolled back in on the chemistry room. Mr. Lampton shut the door and says, move on, people, move on. <laughs> Just every day. Um, so what was, uh, were there any close games or like games that you remember that were your biggest games of the yeah, season? We had quite a few close, quite a few games. close games. Really? Yeah. Was, and, and when we were on the high school, when the varsity team, there were a lot of close games. There were a few blowouts, but yeah. the, with uh, Ranch, Ben was, was Ben was close. Belfont was, was, was only a touchdown. Was as close as you get. Yeah, and Jersey Shore was Jersey Shore was only so it was only a touchdown was, difference. The game, the game that I remember the most. I played junior high, played JV. In fact, I played two years of JVs. My junior year, they didn't have enough center, so I got to play on the JVs on went Thursday and Thursday. Right, but the game I remember most is the one, one of the game that I ever played in and lost in the State College our junior year. And I can remember that almost play by play. The rest of them just kind of faded, but that loss I can remember. My biggest one I think was uh, the year before, junior year. Uh, Lock Haven came up here to play. Milan Nack had won 53 uh, games in a row. Yep. It was his longest, longest winning streak in, in the state. state. And we ended up tying them. That didn't go down too good. We were, we were leading, or they were leading us 19 nothing at halftime. We came back out, shut them down, and scored 19 points. My dad said it was, he was standing outside waiting for me to get done showering. He said there was a woman come out leaning on her husband and said, "The ball team's bald eagle." <laughs> well, I remember, I remember the next year after tying them. How bad we wanted to whip those guys in our senior years, and we did. We did whip them pretty good. I can't remember what the score was. It was 34 to something, but we wanted to do more, and Sig wouldn't let us. He, he, we wanted to run the score up because they'd run it up. All well, you years. you remember when the, you, when we were when we were in junior high? I mean, Baltimore area could whip by everybody, you know, and it was 
Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So you know. those those guys were on the losing end of many of those games, so we were trying to get back for them for all those years. Right. We were. And and that's why we were upset because Sig would but Sig would he wouldn't let us run it up on them. Did you know you were the first varsity team to beat Lock Haven in football? You never beat Lock Haven before you beat no, our senior year. Yeah, you're probably right. Ben was another one. We, we very seldom would beat Ben. Ben had a tremendous coach. He was a good coach. Paul Field was a good coach. What was it? Tussie Martin played in snow? In snow. Oh, that's the most middle team I've ever played. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but do you remember what happened at Tussie Mountain? Do you guys remember? They they scored first. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And the announce, I can re I'll never forget the announcer announcing, because, I mean, ball, everyone knew Bald Eagle when they were shooting. We go in there, and they score first, and the announcer announced it was the first time in years that they had ever led it. I think they were leading at halftime, weren't they? No, you remember? no, no, they weren't. No, they but they, were, they, they took the lead, and they announced it on the scoreboard, and <laughs> we're all hearing this, you know, but it wasn't the, it was the snow yeah. game. Yeah. But the mud, there was, there was three inches of mud under that snow, and the snow was three or four inches deep. And I never remember being so miserable. My hands got like stumps. I'm sure everybody did, especially you. You had to catch the ball. Um, Mr. Dyke mentioned in the CDT article that Coach Signorino was a master at motivation. How did he do it? He you got your attention real quick. Yeah. And, uh, we, we knew right away when we came in that first year, when he, after Kenzie left, and after he left, when they, when they, when uh, Sig came in, well, you knew right away who was who was running that show when we got there. My way or the highway. Yeah. 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 But the remarkable thing about him is, as tough as he was, he could instill it in all the guys. I mean, it was a team thing. I mean, it wasn't just the starters that he could instill that in. He instilled it in the whole team. I mean, we had sophomores and juniors playing. And uh, he was the first coach, I think. I mean, we were, we were pretty fortunate. The senior class had more athletes than I've ever seen on Red, a football. I mean, you know, kids. first team to second team, you didn't drop on most of those positions. Uh, but we had sophomores and juniors playing, too, and he got them all worked in. I mean, that was, it was a remarkable I don't think he if he'd played. have been here, would have been the same. I don't think if that class hadn't have been here, it would have been the same. It was he played a lot of players. Yeah. You know, he, yeah. We, uh, he had, we had a kickoff team, a receiving team, yeah. a defensive team, yeah. and, and a, an offensive team. And, yeah. you know, you would, after we had changed series, you know, guys would run off, and other guys would run yeah. in, and you'd watch the other team, the same guys were there. Yeah, the whole Standing time. out there, yeah. going the whole way. Yeah. Cool. And we do, we would just wear them down. That, that's wear what them happened down. to Lock Haven. They were leading 19 nothing at the half. We came back and scored 19 points and shut them down. They had a little back. I forget his name. But boy, he was tough. Yeah, was that Decker? Was that Decker kid? I don't know. He came up through there and I hit him. So I heard my teeth hurt and he'd still get on and come back. But that big center they had, he was a great big kid. In the first half, he shoved me all over the field. In the second half, his tongue was dragging all around and I was stomping all over. Uh, and they just wore down. And I still think that that has been lost. You, you look at the teams we've had here since, the coaches we've had here since, and the other teams too. Nobody does that. I remember, I won't mention the coach's name, but they had 70 people on the sidelines and only 15 got in the game. I sat there and counted. Yeah. yeah. And there's a dog gone tired that couldn't work. Yeah. But every time the offense had run off, I'd run on. And when the, Series was over, I'd run off and I'd be fresh. That made all the difference in the world. I think I can remember Sig saying, because I, I, I don't know where I heard this, but you know, you know, they always talked about how much depth the, 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 we had. Well, you know, you build your depth. Absolutely. You build your depth by playing those guys, and that's what Sig did. We he played a lot of players. Absolutely. And well, when we, we ran a lot of players. JV, you know, putting the end coach. Yeah. 
we all used to go <laughs> at Ken and say, hey, come on, let me hey, in. Hey, you Kenny, know? we used to get as close as we could to him and say, <laughs> exactly. him and get in there. Yeah. <laughs> but I can stop him. I can stop him. <laughs> Do you remember the speech he gave us, Sig, the first year? Well, when he, he did. Start, it. He gave us a, he when he a started good talk, motivator. He when he started talking about playing everybody in platoon system, do you remember the speech he gave us? I'm the best football coach in the world, boys. I can teach anybody to play football, and he did, position by position. And, and that's what made all the difference. And I look out here at these teams, not only our school, but other schools, and I see the same thing going on. 11 50, guys going 50 both kids ways. out there, 11 guys going both ways. It's a shame. It's a shame. I, Do you remember the, the music we had oh. Jersey before the game to calm you and relax you? Yeah. All the fight songs from different schools. Oh, I hated those. <laughs> you remember how he grabbed hold of somebody once around and started shaking them and slapping them across the face? Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? He did that to me. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve it. Yeah, I I <laughs> So, who was your biggest rival? I know ours is Belfont today. Was it still Belfont or was it someone else? Yeah, I think it was Belfont. Yeah. Definitely Belfont. I, it, from a team standpoint, I would say Belfont. But for the, the kids from Howard, and there were a number of us from Howard. It was Lockheed. It was, well, no, oh. actually, Kenny, it was more bent. Was it? Yeah, yeah because of Beach Creek. And yeah. Bla oh, it was, that's true. It was yeah. funny. The kids, there yeah. was Howard, right next was was Blanchard, and yeah. those kids went to Lock Man, Haven. Yeah. Oh, no, Blanchard, Blanchard went, went to Lock, Lock Haven. And then Beach Creek went to Bend, and they were closer. You know, oh, so you, yeah, it was, yeah. you know those people of Clinton yeah. County. They yeah. really yeah. screwed up, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I would say, for the most point, I, I'd agree it was oh, Belmont. Yeah. What is your best memory from your high school years? Yeah. High school years, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I, everybody's going to have a different answer. And uh, I mean, I'll say right up front, I wasn't a great athlete, but I loved football. I wanted it so bad. I loved football. Football was the best thing for me. I, mine is the friendships that we built. Yeah. And, you know, I haven't seen some of these guys. Now I see Gary a little bit more. But I haven't seen some of the, you guys for years. And we can come back and... and yeah, and we can strike right back up, and, and I think it was, you know, we it was a we had we had a unique situation when we came here, and we were the first class coming through, and meeting everybody. I mean, we it's not like we went to grade school with everybody, you know. We had, you know, yeah, it was all friend, and and we built real friendships, and and those friendships still last today. Well, I, I agree, and and I think we were one of the first classes that you didn't have the number of clicks that you normally. You know, the jocks got along with the, with the, the, the good students. I don't want to say that properly. <laughs> you know, and... Uh, you were a good student, though. I was not a good student. So that was well, we, <laughs> we got you were a good kid. athlete, and I wasn't, okay? So that's what I'm saying. I mean, it didn't matter. I mean, it was a, it was a class that really liked one another. And uh, I was real shook up when we finally graduated. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. The football, I, I agree, was the best. And he said he wasn't an athlete. I was the worst athlete in the whole team. But I just love football. You know? and you're the, Kenny, there was nobody had the desire that you had. No. Oh, no. Yeah. You, you had that. He really had that fire. He really did. Well, when you play, particularly the years that we played, football, even baseball, or any discipline, builds character. It builds discipline, something that is sorely missing today uh, in a lot of the schools. Do you realize, do you realize these kids that played football today was to get in, if Sig was to walk out there the way he was then, how long they'd last on the field and then after? <laughs> About 10 seconds. You wouldn't see uh, shirt tails hanging out, guys wearing different colored socks or shirts or whatever. It was uniform. You know how we wore. The quickest way to get into the locker room was to take your helmet off along the sideline. Take your helmet off along the sideline, you were off the field, gone. You did not do that. Talks about what word? Respect. 
Yeah, that's a respect. That's a respect. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the coaches, the coaches were the gods. gods. The coaches were gods. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. the way. That's the way we look at it. Yeah. Different today. My next question is, did it seem like the community really came together during the undefeated season, or was it more of a not-so-supported season? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Like, how did they the stand, how did The react? stands were full. Yeah, Friday night. Absolutely. If you could imagine going out there and looking up, and you couldn't find a seat in the stands anywhere. They were packed standing room only up that hill, yeah. inside, the, inside the fence, and there were people crawling up the outside of the fence and hung over the fence like this on their elbows watching the game. There was no room to stand. Here in Center County, the uh, big talk was where was Paul Lake of Plain. And there, there were many times people would come. I had, uh, I had uncles that lived in Jersey Shore that wouldn't go to the Jersey Shore game. They would drive up here to watch Paul Lake play. That's what they. Uh, yeah. Gary's dad actually built a, a huge box to dry the balls. Oh yeah. For the Wet games. I didn't yeah. remember. Who, I didn't know who built it, but I remember the ball. I remember the box. And yeah, because he was concerned about you fumbling that wet ball. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you talk about the communities, how they came together. <laughs> he would, uh, you know, after the game on Friday, you know, we'd go over to Wolf's. You know, all the players would go over to Wolf's yeah. restaurant or uh, Earl Holder's barbershop, and the guys would be in there, and they would, you know, all oh, yeah. the, they would just love. To be rehashing the game with us the next yep. day. Yeah. Well, what, what amazed me was I could really walk, I could be walking down the street in Milesburg and people would be waving and hollering my name, and I didn't know them from Adam. Right. But really, it really bonded. It, it really did. Yeah. Got a lot over here. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, coach. <laughs> Around, Danny, oh, Eric. Oh. Hey. Danny, Eric. How you doing? Danny, Eric. How you doing? Chris Brower. Chris Brower. Oh my God. Harry Knight. Harry Knight. This guy's a golfer here. You know, every time your son called me, I kept thinking I was talking to you. Uh, and I, I didn't recognize, you know, the Doug. You know. Think they must. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Put them up there. Yeah, yeah. Put them up there. Well, I'll put them right there. That's what's fine. You want to sit here where they get really get you good on no. camera? <laughs> no, you know, he can see you really good there. You're more photogenic. Oh. <laughs> what up here, Coach? Go ahead. Good to see you. Right here, Coach. Let's go. Okay. Over there. Okay. You too, Coach. He's not. He wasn't on that team. <laughs> He's asking the question. Uh, He's asking sure. the question. <laughs> he wasn't even being thought about. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be there tonight. Uh, yeah, this, is awesome. this is the whole new, isn't it? Yeah. Since I was here, <laughs> it might be old, but since I was here, this is new. All right. And your name is? I'm Ron Signore. I'm Tyler Pickle. Yep. He's the man. That's his partner. Happy crime. Happy yep. crime. I remember Terry Norman over there. Terry Dorman. Uh, I remember the names of this team better than I remember some of the teams that I've coached recently. Really? It was such a great team. Yeah, we were we were talking. We were you talk got, you guys it. made me a good coach. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Oh, okay. We were bragging you up before you came, but we're not going to. We have to stop. That. <laughs> you know. Yeah, question that you just asked about the coach. Right here. Oh, this one. I um, asked a question about Mr. Dyke mentioned in the CDT article that you were a, um, a master of motivation. How did you do it? Well, I think, I don't know if you all are aware, I still coach. Yes, I do. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, and I would say, I don't really know what I do, but from what everybody tells me, that's what I do best. More than the X's and O's, I was able to get the players excited. Uh, I don't know, foot, football was always a part of my life. My dad was a coach. 
I knew I was going to be a coach. I mean, I grew up. What what else is there? You know, you're you're a football coach, and I went to became a teacher because you had to be a teacher to coach, and I'm still coaching. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, but I, I I did. I I believed in talking to the players and motivating the players. I, we probably spent more time on that than we did with X's and O's. I didn't know diddly about X's and O's in those days. I didn't know anything, but I had good players. They could play. Uh, one thing on that line, I remember one thing you motivated me on. You took me aside before that one game, and I can't remember the game. And you said, Chris, they've only got one good athlete on this team, and he'll go by you so fast. You said, maybe, you said, maybe you ought to quit that hand shiver and do something else. And I, I just sort of, you know, I'd been doing it, and it was working. First play of the game, it went right past me and right by Dan Reiser and went for a touchdown. And I heard somebody holler my name. I turned around looking. Here come a sophomore. Hollered my name. So I went off the field. And you met me four yards out on the field, grabbed me by the face mask, and slammed me down <laughs> on the bench and said, stay right there. <laughs> and after the after the second half, when you got done talking to everybody else, you said, are you ready to play football yet? But I was about half wow by that time. I had eight solo tackles the second half. That was a motivation. So that's how I <laughs> grabbed the face mask. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You can't do that today. today yeah. You can't do that today. Oh, I remember you taking hold of me and shaking me and going like this. Oh, yeah. Time. <laughs> I coached most of my life in the heyday of coaching when coaching was fun. Nowadays, trust me, well, it's not as much fun. Coach, we were talking a little bit earlier about when we were the respect that we had. I mean, our. You guys were gods to us. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I believe that. We wanted to play football, and here was the guys. They, these guys were on this pedestal up here. You know, I mean, we didn't have the Steelers, and we didn't have the Eagles, and so on. we had our coaches. Yeah. And they were the guys that were teaching us and instilling, yeah. you know, football into yeah. us. And that was, you know, yeah. that that's not that's there's too many things today. Yeah, too many things. It's, coaching's hard. It's hard. You, you, now you have to, you, you have to have a, uh, be certified in concussion. There are five tests that you have to pass before you can even coach. Okay, uh, first aid, uh, CPR, concussions, and you have to renew it every year. I mean, it's just everybody is protecting their back end and the poor coach, and then you you can't. You can't be demanding, grab a face mask? you got to be kidding. Yeah. And you know what? You guys are all better off for the way that your fathers left us coach you. You're better off. We're cheating these kids today. But it's society. It's, it's, a, it's society. Yeah. They're bigger. They're faster. But... And most of them do specialize in one sport. You know, in the summertime, the basketball coach is tugging on them. The baseball coach, I'm in a community, you may have heard, we were Little League champs a few years ago. Uh, the baseball coaches, baseball's 12 months a year, basketball's 12 months a year, football's 12 months a year, football coach is tugging on them, the basketball coach is tugging on them, the baseball coach is tugging on them. So if they play one sport, most of them now specialize. Yeah, you remember we went from football season was over. You went to wrestling. basketball or, or wrestling. Yeah, wrestling was over. It In was, the spring it was, it baseball, was baseball, baseball until you started. You got until you guys started the track team. Yeah, yeah, because we started track was what was it a junior year? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. My brother was a, my brother was two years younger than me. He was on the first track team for several years. So. But I know I, you know Doherty was a big. Jay was a big track guy. He wanted to have a track. You know, when Doug called me and he said, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary, it was like hitting me with a tub of ice water. It never dawned upon me. 50 years, 1963. 50 years. This guy 
I mean, we were the best of buddies. We probably haven't talked for 40 years. I called him, I said, L, it's too long, okay? We have got to get together and renew and spend time with one another. Okay. What do we, what do we I'm doing all the talking. <laughs> we did all it before. Yeah. You did you your job. everything bad about you. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know? Well, let me say this. Yeah. Chris had a son that was a really good football player. Especially Better than he was. Linebacker. No, he's a good player. But he went to Bucknell, and I don't know how long he played there, Chris, but I know he was a good football player here. Terry Dorman had a son <clears throat> that was a great wrestler and a great football player, especially linebacker and fullback. Really good. What did he weigh, Terry? Oh, when he played, probably uh, he wrestled 169 at the time. Yeah, football, 170, 170. Yeah. But he played like he's 210. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Well, you know, uh, Danny's brother, Terry, and uh, this guy and his brother played cornerback for us at what, 115? Or on, a good day. on a good on day. On a good day. On a good day. On a good day. Yeah. Well, Doug is your son, right? Yes. And the first couple, later. first couple of times that I talked to him, I assumed I was talking. I knew you and your twin brother. Maybe I had forgotten the first name. I don't, I don't know. But I knew the Dyke twins, so I assumed he, he was one of you, one of you. Uh, and then uh, I said something about his dad. I thought, I mean, you guys are all what sixty-seven, somewhere around there. I thought, wow, you know, I'm still thinking I'm talking to you, you know. And then he finally says, well, you're, you're, th you're, th you're yeah, my dad and my uncle, you know, the twins. That's when I finally realized that I was talking to your son. So he, he probably thinks I'm not too smart. <laughs> He's probably right. <clears throat> so anyhow, uh, Ron Bracken called me. You all know Ron Bracken. Oh, yeah. Last Sunday, we had a long conversation. I taught Ron Bracken. I don't remember what I taught him, mm -hmm. but uh, when he called me, he said, Ron, he said, I'm Ron Bracken. I said, yeah, I know who you are. I said, I'm very proud of you because I was the best teacher you ever had, and you became sports editor of the Center Daily Times. I said, I'm very proud of you. He said, well, I remember everything you taught me. So we had a nice long conversation. Uh, he was a great sports writer. Yes, he was. He yes, was the he was. best. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yep. And he's covering the game tonight. Oh, yeah. He's covering this event. Yeah. How but good is Huntington? Three and three, same as us. Yeah. Three and three. Good game. Should be. What was they your? They beat Central Mountain. Yes, big time. What was your uh, nicknames, and how did you get them? Jeez. If it's appropriate, how did you get them? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was the mighty Mike, weren't you? Was that, that, was that Larry or you? It was me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was after the, what, Belfonte. Yeah. I intercepted three passes. Yeah. The Belfonte. Quite a day. We didn't have a lot of nicknames. I was just going to say, I don't think we had a lot of nicknames. My, my nickname was Gary. You know, Terry, Terry was Tiger. You know, they used to call it Terry Tiger all the time, but I don't think a lot of guys had nicknames. I, I didn't was think. Bear, but we're not going into how I got One of the teams yeah, that I coached back in New Jersey, one of the things that we did, we gave them all nicknames. And when you mentioned nicknames, I'm thinking, I didn't start giving nicknames when I was at Bald Eagle. So when you ask them their nicknames, I'm thinking to myself, I have no idea what their nicknames are. But I, I coached the team for 16 years in New Jersey, and we gave them nicknames, you know, the, the starters. They got nicknames, and they were, they, they looked forward. And then, we, and then we always had a celebration, what we call a star, star time, you know, the, the decals. We'd put the decals on, Started out yeah, here too. Yeah, started out yeah. here. Right. We started. Yep. 
and uh, and when we called them up for their decals, we always called them by their nickname, you know, which, you know, wh whatever it might be, you know, but I would always give a lot of thought to that, you know. Uh, and, it, and the kids remember their nicknames more than, you know, than anything. But uh, I knew we didn't do that here at Bald Eagle. So when you did nicknames, I'm thinking, wow, I don't think I did that at Bald Eagle. But we got the stars. You, you, yeah. The yeah. charts. Yeah. yeah. We still do the charts. Yeah. We still do that, and we still do the decals. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was uh, that was cool. That was pretty, Those pretty are the exciting motivational things. <laughs> There's some of the motivational things. Is this closed circuit uh, television in the school? Is that what this is? No. No? What is no. this? This is, they're recording this for, are they done? Yeah, I'm going to explain to us what yeah. this is recording for, Dylan. It's more of like a memorable thing. Okay. We're going to post this on it. our uh, Eagle Ambassador website, which is our Alumni Education Association and alum Alumni website, so all of the uh, alumni can see this. Also, we're, we're going to be popular. Huh? You are going to be popular. We're stars there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the other questions we had was, during the season, what was the more emotional and physical parts of the season that were challenging to either the players or the, you as the coach? Why don't we let the players? I, I don't know if anybody else remembers you, but I remember we were going to play state college our senior year. And we were out there and it started, it was getting late, like practice would be over, it was starting to get dusk. We were out there doing that thing where you used to have one of us fall down, the other one jump, and the other one get up, keep jumping over each other. Yeah. And he's there saying, State college is breaking up and they're heading for the locker room and we're still working. Yeah. And we kept on working. Yeah. We ran some more wind sprints, and he said, "State college is in the shower, and we're still working." Yeah. And uh, I still do. I still say that. I remember. I remember almost having to crawl up that hill to get into the locker room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was challenging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we were in pretty good shape because we yeah. ran a lot of plays. Well, we had that fast huddle. You know, we had that fast huddle. What was that? What was our max number of offensive plays? I don't remember that. But I went up to Tyrone from Mont Oregon. That's where I got that offense. You know, I mean, I was no more prepared to be the head coach than the man in the moon. But when they hired me, I said, "Wow, what are we going to do now?" And I went up to my high school coach in Tyrone, and I said, "Coach, I said, you got to give me an offense, which was a wing tee, but it was that hurry up, you know." And we did it well. We did it well. It was fun. Actually, you know, it was a flip tee. Split team, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think we ran 90 plays one time. I know we did. We ran 90 I plays took, a game. I took, yeah. now listen to this. this. You can appreciate how good you guys were, okay? I took the same offense and the same defense that we were, we lost one game in two years yeah. to, Tom's, to Tom's River. My first year, we won one game, three nothing. <laughs> one game with that same offense and that same defense. And I thought to myself, well, those kids back up all day were pretty good football. <laughs> Which I knew that, you know. And what I'm going to tell them tonight, I'll tell you guys now. I always knew, I was smart enough to know that I got the job in Tom's River because of what you guys did on the field. The, the superintendent at Tom's River, none of you know this story. He graduated from State College High School and he went to Penn State and became superintendent of the school in Tom's River. I never knew him. But they fired the coach in the, in the two years, 62 and 63, when we lost one game, Tom's River High School won one game. So while we were being 15 and one, they were one and 17. And the superintendent fired them, called up Penn State. Now remember, he's, he's an alumni of Penn State and he's a graduate of State College High School. Yeah. I want a Penn State man. I want you to give me the name of a good young established coach. They gave him my name. I went up there very nervous, you know, talking, I had the interview before the, the 
high school principal, the Board of Education, the athletic director. Little did I know, it was my job all along, because I was the only guy that Penn State recommended. They would have never recommended me if it weren't for what you guys did on the field. I didn't know diddly about coaching, but I got you excited, I got you motivated, and you were talented, and you played your butts off, you had fun. Plus we had about, what, five up? Offensive plays. Yeah, exactly. One defense. Yeah. And the other thing, yeah. simpleness. Yeah. But I owe it all to you guys. And the other yeah. thing is, how many, how many guys played? I mean, we all played. Oh, yeah. Everyone was there. We had a job, and you, you taught us to yeah. do those good and, exactly. that, and do that and, job. And, do your job. Do your job. I, yeah. I don't know why, how, why you can say you didn't know anything because I remember playing junior high and then saw my sophomore year. We had this. We had this uh, seven-man sled, you know. We'd start down one end, and you'd hit the sled, and you'd spin off and come around on your butt, and you'd pump, hit the next one, we get down to the other end. So we're out there on a scrimmage one day, and I got double teamed, taken right out of the play. And you come in there, and the veins were standing out of your neck, and you were screaming in my face, Brower, what's wrong with you? I said, I got double teamed, Coach. And you said, so you got double teamed? He said, what do you think we do that drill on the sled for every day. I said, what drill? And you and you stopped the practice right there. Marched us all up in the sled, and all of a sudden the Ford light bulb went off. That's yeah. why I'm doing that. Yeah. So the next time I get hit, yeah. you told me you spin away from the pressure. I spun yeah. away from the pressure, and I'm right in the hole. But nobody ever told me that before. Yeah. 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 You taught us to play. Yeah. Well, we did do that. Well, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to come and let us. I did all you. the talking. <laughs> well, we, did, we did a lot. You know, before you, you have to you have to watch the uh, tape. Of uh, what we said beforehand. Before I got here. <laughs> you sure it'll be okay? Well, it's, it's you fun. know I want I wanted to say this. I get a Christmas card from Jerry Smackman. We we exchange, and. The thing, and of course, you know, Jerry was a year ahead of you, right? Right. so we really only had him one year. But I know a phrase that I, I still use, and I used it a lot then, and every time I get the Christmas card from Jerry, he repeats that little saying, and I'm sure you'll remember this, okay? I'm from Missouri. Don't tell me. Show me. And Jerry, that really left an impression on him, and he always recites that. I'm not going to tell you, Coach. I'm going to show you. Coach, I have. So that's I, the end of my conversation. I have about 150 guys working for me. Yeah. And uh, um, in my company, and I use that same thing today. Yeah. I say, listen, I'm from Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me. Show me. It's a good one. It works. It's a good one. It works. Kids, that that leaves yeah. an impression on kids. So, we so anyhow, have... I just threw that out. I knew you'd remember that. In order for us to come up with all of our questions, we want to show you a little. We pulled out little from little the library. library. Oh, yeah. The... yeah I looked a little great. different back then. <laughs> I found this. If you want to look at it. Yeah. If you want to look I at it. You, I, ha I have it That's a somewhere. Tree. Somewhere. Uh, That's I, a I, I looked yeah. for that. Yeah. That was our junior year. That was our junior year. Oh yeah, the '63. Uh, yeah, that would be your junior year. Yeah, the, the yearbook would be '64 because you were the class of '64. Right. That's us. Have you seen Dan Reiser? No. I've never seen him since we graduated. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Danny. Is, is, is it? I don't know. I was, that's why I was wondering if he was coming. I, I don't know. I don't know that. Doug told me there were over 30 guys. All right, well, I want to thank you guys for coming. Okay, thank I, I'm going to head out. So it was nice okay. to meet all of you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, you did a good job there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Good hearing your stories, Chris. Very good. Thank you. Good